Hi, yeah. How are we doing? I hope you like that attention grabbing title, but I really am going to try and tell you what you need to be doing right now in order to get the top grades in CCs or your A level. So this applies to you both. I'm not going to do too much kind of topic talking, but if you've got any questions and do ask them, and I'll try and give you any answers like specific bits about in physics. Um, sorry that I haven't been doing so many live feeds and haven't been doing any uploads as usual. OK, I'm going to get back onto that now. Things have been really busy at school with mock exam marking and stuff like that. And also I've got really big news because I've got a promotion to head of science at a new school. So there's big changes coming along for me. Um, but this is what you need to be doing right now if you're in year 11 or you're in year 13 um, to make sure that you give yourself the best chance of getting the best grade. So you're getting a grade nine or an A star, depending on which course you're doing. So um, here, here we go. So I really think right now you need to be looking and diagnosing exactly where your areas are. And you're going to do that by going back through your old books and especially go back through your old assessments. If you have got in your old exercise, your old tests and things like that, find them, find all those little topic tests and go through in really minute detail all the questions that you did then and all the things that you, um, all the things that you were kind of struggling at that point. Okay, all the things that you found difficult at the time and you probably gone through those with the teacher and made corrections. So look through all those areas and kind of think, well, I learn that now or actually is it still difficult for you? And make a kind of list of priorities. You need to right now be planning for Easter, right? So right now, plan for Easter because uh, right now you're at school and you're actually um, with your teachers and you can get the right resources and you can get the right advice and you can make sure that you're ready to go at Easter. Easter is really make or break time for the people who get the really top grades, okay? It's really the time when you really start to bring everything together and you really start to make sure that you are ready for those exams because almost straight after Easter, about three weeks after Easter really, but it's going to go pretty fast after that. You'll be straight into the exams and then you will hardly have time to think, but you'll lean on that kind of like the fact that you've got your resources ready and you know the areas that you need to do. So now's the time to think clearly and carefully about the areas you need to work on so that when it gets thick and fast, into that exam period straight after Easter, you are really just doing it. Okay, you're really just putting the last piece into place and you know where areas are and you can just work on them. All right, now at Easter, and I'll be back again before Easter, but at Easter, I some really good advice, um, which is don't sort of uh, relax at first, just go straight into the revision during the Easter holidays and actually spend a good, like the first half of your Easter holiday working really quite hard on your definitely then start to relax and have a bit of a relaxing period at the end. But my mistake I always make with holidays is I always relax in the first few days. I always get to the end of the holiday, I'm so ready for holiday, and I relax straight away, rather than actually just going ahead and doing some work at the start. And the difficulty is if you relax straight away, it's harder to get back into the kind of work mode. Whereas if you do something that you're really kind of uncomfortable with, so that you do something that you know is a big priority right at the start, you've got it under your belt. And when it comes to the end, you can be like, yeah, I can take a few days now and I can relax and feel good about that and feel good about relaxing. And if you're relaxing, worrying about what you should have been doing, then that's not really very relaxing. So do make sure that you plan it in that way. Basically, you need to right now, you need to be going home at Easter with a plan to put into action. You need to have all the resources, you know, to exactly what you're going to do and you need to just do it at Easter. OK, that is really it. Um, and then when you come back after Easter, the way I want you to come back after Easter is knowing you've worked on some areas and there's probably some, still some areas that you're still struggling with. And I want you to ask your teachers about those areas. I want you to go to your teacher and say, I've worked on P5 waves. Um, I've worked on it and I'm still finding it hard. So can you do a whole lesson on it? Or can you tell me um, you know, what I'm going wrong here with these questions? Can you focus on these? And then that's really very really useful for your teachers. You can provide them with the planning that they need. Okay, that's all really, okay? That's all I'm really going to go through today. But if there's any kind of questions that you've got for me, then that's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and come back a few times in a couple of weeks to make sure that I'm keeping you, um, you know, updated where you need to be and when you're planning and things like that. Do um, ask if you've got any kind of video questions that you want. I'm going to put out a couple more videos that I've been planning for ages. <laughs> As I said, I've been, um, been a bit busy, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, this is a priority now and I want to make sure I'm doing constant, more consistent live streams for you to get you ready to um, ready to prepare for those exams. A couple of plugs then, obviously um, some amazing YouTube channels out there. The two that I really recommend for you for GCSE or A-level physics, um, Lewis Matheson at Physics Online, okay, um, and 
uh, also obviously Primrose Kitten for all the rest of your sciences and um, A-level chemistry, she's amazing for as well. She's got a whole range of different things. I also want to say that um, Primrose Kitten has written really good um, practical resources and they're published by Oxford, so you can get them on Amazon. And in my um, description here, there's a link to my little Amazon store page, which gives me like 3% commission on books or something like that. So full disclosure there. But I really do think that they're really good. And I've put in that store page all the kind of recommended textbooks and revision guides and things that I recommend. So do check those out. Primrose Kitten has got some amazing resources on her own website and use her links as well. So she gets the little commission as well. But um, I think that her books and things, her revision guides are really, really good quality as well. She's worked really hard them so um, well done to Jen also in that you can find my memorize equations book and if you're doing um, GCC physics or GCC sciences and you haven't memorized all your equations there's no excuses for that um, this book only costs three pound fifty for the little book or two pound for the ebook okay that is also in that link on that um, store as well um, I get like 35p for every book full disclosure so it's not getting a massive amount of money but you know um, I think that it's a really useful resource and I've got those videos and that also look through my uh, my playlist as well go to my channel look through the playlist and off you go you'll be absolutely fine with that yeah 350 exactly that's all <laughs> free <laughs> that's why I priced it as free 50 anyway um I just want to I'm going to really quickly go through my main point there somebody asked for maths questions so just really quickly about that um the maths questions bit, take your time, make sure you know exactly what units you need to be converting in. Essentially, uh, kilograms is the only time you use anything with a prefix. The rest of the time you get rid of the prefix, but you do use mass in kilograms, okay? So make sure you can convert those units. Again, unit conversions are all in this book as well. Another little plug there. And um, make sure that you're ready for that. These, this is really good for that because it, uh, it gives you the equation and then some practice questions that go from like easy ones, right? So the easy ones is using it as in the form it is with no unit conversion. The harder ones are rearranging, but no unit conversions. And the hardest one in here is where you've got to rearrange and convert units. So I think this, this one is a really good practice for um, using equation and answering the maths question. So that might help you out there, that person that asked that question. Answering six markers, and I will get you to Rachel and talk about hardest practical, um, well, I think. Answering six markers, um, is for me, it's about splitting it down into two three mark questions, okay? And even in A-level, we have these longer written ones, don't you? It's about just checking through and thinking, um, what is the smaller questions within this bigger question? And if you do that, um, I think then you can write a more better structured answer if you treat it like two three mark questions or even three two mark questions. There's always a way in the question they're kind of hinting at, right about this, right about this. Um, and then once you've answered the question, I think this is the most important part, read back the question and then read your answer again and think have I answered everything in the question in my answer so I think that a lot of people they read the question then they answer it and then they reread their answer to check they've done everything but they don't check back with the question to check they've done everything they've been asked to do so I hope that really helps it's all about structuring it's normally going to be two paragraphs basically two two questions within one big question hardest um practical in GCSE that is Rachel I think isn't it hardest practical it's, I think to, like, it, might be the, um, it might be the acceleration one, okay, uh, and it might also be the, um, so that's the acceleration one is the ramp uh, or, or a pulley and you're measuring the force acting on the trolley or you're measuring the slope or something like that, but it's basically a method to determine the acceleration. I think kids really struggle with that idea of acceleration. For me, think about calculating the average speed and then multiply that by two to get the final speed. And then that final speed is like the change in speed because it started from zero and then divide that by the time taken. And the other one I think is quite hard is the energy one, this specific heat capacity one. So I think specific heat capacity is quite a difficult concept. I think that's one of the most difficult conceptually. There's also loads of maths in that one as well. So aside from that, uh, I, I think. But again, I, I think again, just try and keep it simple for yourself. Try and memorize just a, a method apparatus you're gonna use and some evaluative points about each one and some expected results. And um, just trying to get too confused with them, really. All right. Uh, do I recommend physics and maths tutor? Yes, to a point. Um, he's basically, or they've just basically, for me, they've put up loads of past papers, which you can get elsewhere. Um, so yes and no. But they're, they're just, it's just a bank of past papers. It's, it's quite, it's, I'm sure, look, the, these people have worked really hard on it. Uh, I'm, I'm a little dubious of whether they should really have been have 
put all of those exam questions up in the way they have done because I think in the term conditions they, they perhaps shouldn't but hey it doesn't bother you you can just use it um, okay really quickly summarize what I've said in this video then um, right now be diagnosing where you're up to be making sure that you're making a plan of your priorities not just what you, you think like you've been told but go through in detail all your books all of your past papers and think oh, I, I hate that lesson what you know I'll go through that bit again I did really badly in that test why, why did I do it badly? Maybe you think, okay, I wouldn't do so badly in that test, that topic test now, um, in which case it's not a priority. But if it's still the case that you think, oh, I still don't get why that's the answer, then make that a priority. And in doing so, you're going to have done some really good revision, by the way. You're going to look at some old questions and some old lessons you've done. And then really plan out your Easter. And when you get to Easter, get straight on it. Okay, you've got all the resources in place in these couple of weeks now. When you hit Easter, you start working straight away. You don't take a break initially. You go straight into work and um, you take a break at the end of Easter. And then when you come back, you ask your teachers, you say, here's my priorities, help me with this. Plan me lessons on this topic because I struggle with this topic. And your teachers will like that. They will appreciate that and they will sure go ahead and plan you those lessons. All right, all the best then. About 10 minutes is pretty good for a live stream. I hope this has been useful. Thanks a lot for watching and um, let me know in the main comments or anytime if you want a video on anything else. Uh, I can't promise I'll do it straight away, but I can promise I'll put it on my um, 